Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about layout and the art of animating cameras like a pro. Let's get started. So when you're working on a 3D animated feature film like I do at work, you have several different phases you go through. Once you've got your storyboards worked out, the next phase is called layout. First idea behind layout is what you want to do is you want to rough out all of the poses of your characters and get all of your cameras in place. Now you can see in the top uh, right here, I've got it set up so I've got my storyboard. I've got this grease pencil reference, so I'm able to kind of time out my cameras and my poses based on that because I've done this kind of rough edit with the storyboard already. Now I'm using Blender as like a live editing tool as well. So you can see I'm placing markers on my timeline and binding cameras to them. So as I create a new camera, I set it up as a marker and I bind a marker to that camera on my timeline. Then I can just move them around and that allows me to then see what this looks like as an edit as we cut back and forth. So you can see here I've, I've kind of roughed out the, the basic walk cycle of the robots. Um, I'm not doing anything detailed. It's very basic kind of um, blocking of all the poses. And the point of this is to get everything kind of in its position for where it's going to be in the film. And then it's to get the cameras in the right place. So you can see here, I'm working on the poses of the robot as he runs off and hides into the side. And I'm focusing on this camera as well. I'm trying to figure out, okay, what's the best camera angle to capture this action? So you're kind of doing two things when you're doing layout. You're, you're roughing out the poses and the animation. You're going, okay, what's the best way for a character to do this performance? How should they move through the space? Where should the extras be? Where should the other characters be in relation to them? And then you're thinking about the camera. What's the best way to capture this motion? What's the best way to capture this part of the film with a camera? I'm not worried about any detailed animation at all. So none of the animation at this point is, is detailed at all. In fact, I'll show you at the end of this little segment what I ended up with. And it's kind of a, something you're continually refining. And you'll see as I progress with this whole thing, I, I do continue to refine the camera, even when I start getting into detailed animation. Usually layout is something that kind of happens first, and then the animation animators come in and they'll animate everything. And then you have something called final layout where an artist will go back and refine the cameras based on the final animation. Um, and I'm kind of doing that all together in one big mess of um, jumping back and forth. And that's because you know Blender gives you this opportunity to work in this real time workflow, this real time environment where you can literally jump back and forth without having to commit things uh, all the time. It's really, really powerful and useful. So you can see here, I'm even changing the edit. I'm moving my camera markers around a little bit and I'm trying different angles. I'm going off my storyboards because I'm like, oh, I don't really like where the storyboard plays out here. So I'm getting creative and kind of riffing on it. And right here, you see, I'm trying to find a new angle because I'm not happy with the way the storyboard is portraying things. And I wanted to get something a bit more dynamic. Once I saw the robots in the scene and in the space, it was like, oh, this is actually, this, this profile shot doesn't work. So I need to be a bit more interesting and find a better way of introducing them. And actually, it took me a while to finally settle on a camera to start the film off with. Um, and uh, you'll see eventually, once we get into lighting even, that's where I was still refining this camera and getting getting an opening that I liked. Um, it really did take some, take some time and effort. But you have to think about it as an iterative process. It's really helpful to think about storyboards first because they're really basic, they're very graphic. And getting an edit down with those storyboards then gives you a real good foundation because then as you're building your short film, you're able to go, uh, you know, follow almost like a list, a step-by-step -step list. You're looking at each storyboard as a bullet point list of all the things you need to get done for this particular moment. One of the hardest things about short films is they feel, they feel really overwhelming when you're making it because there's so much to do. So any chance you can get to boil it down and make it simple for yourself uh, so that you're focusing on just one little section, the better. Um, and that's why it's really useful to have something like a storyboard reference. Now I'm roughing out the final poses here for the end of this scene where the character falls into the trap door. And uh, again, this is just basic poses, not worrying about detail animation, not even worried about making good animation. It's just about the character's roughly gonna be here and it's gonna fall like this. It'll be about this fast. And so how can I capture my camera with this? All right, so let's take a look at the final result that I ended up with when I finished the layout process for the short film. So you'll see everything's very chunky. The, the animation's very stepped. I'm using stepped keyframes, which don't have any kind of interpolation, any kind of Bezier spline. And my cameras are pretty basic. I'm just getting the framing right. I'm thinking about what kind of lens do I want to use? How do I want to be positioned? And you can see I haven't put a lot of time in the animation. It's very simple blocking poses. So this is really all you need to have uh, in the layout phase. You just need to get this stuff kind of working. So the things you want to think about when animating a camera is you want to think about where is the audience's eye in the frame? Mostly it's going to be at the center, but where is it in the previous shot? 
Where is it going to be in the next shot? Where do you want it to be? So thinking about where is the viewer looking in the frame and how can you direct their attention to the thing that's important? The second thing you need to think about is lensing. What kind of a lens are you going to use? Are you going to compress space with a long lens, like a 200 millimeter, or are you going to frame someone so they look really nice with like a 50 millimeter, or do you want to go really wide with a 14 millimeter or a 12 millimeter lens? How is the camera going to move through the space? How is it moving in the previous shot? And how's it going to move in the next shot? And how are we going to make that movement work so that it feels good across all of them? And the final thing to think about is screen direction. What direction is your characters moving or looking uh, when they're having dialogue or glancing at things? Screen direction is very important for keeping the audience oriented. So let's look at how each of these things plays out. Now, when I cut to this next shot, I'm thinking about the fact that the eye of the audience is going to be right around here in my frame. So when I go forward, you can see I've got the main robot in a, in a similar spot. If I had framed this so the main robot was way over here or way over here, the eye would have to do a jump to find it. And that moment of looking for it can be really distracting and really hinders an edit. So one thing that's really good is to actually vary up your lens sizes so that cuts have different lens sizes. It, it kind of helps uh, prevent jump cuts where it feels like things kind of pop or move in a way that's funny. Um, if you have two shots that are too similar, but like from a slightly different angle, it'll feel like a jump cut. It won't feel very smooth. So when I cut from this shot to this shot, I'm cutting from a camera that's using a 35 millimeter lens. And then I cut to this one here, which is using 146, which is kind of a weird lens, but 145 probably a bit better, 150. But um, I'm not really worried about real world lens sizes in this film. But jumping into a closer lens size, see it's compressed the space. It really helps smooth this edit out. So varying up the lens size is really, really great. The other thing is that it compresses the space. So I still get a sense of these guys in the frame. They look really, really big. Whereas if I was to do a wide angle lens, everything would look really small and distant. So they create different feels. So I'm trying to really focus the audience in on my main character. So I'm using a longer and longer lens to do that. And I'm also using it to vary up my cuts so that things feel a little bit different. Now, the next thing to talk about is screen direction, right? So right now, if you look at which way these guys are going, you can see that they're kind of angled this way, right? So they're walking towards the left side of the frame, even slightly. We're over on the right side and they're walking to the left. This is super important. What you want to do is maintain screen direction. So you can see in this shot, I've cut and they're still walking to the left. Now, if I lock my camera to view and if I was over like this for this shot, this would cause some serious problems because they would look like they're going this way. And then we come over here, they would look like they're going the other way. And that would be really confusing because it feels like they've switched directions. By maintaining that screen direction, uh, we're able to give the audience a consistent sense of where things are moving in the space. It also helps here. So you can see the little robot guy. He's looking towards the left of frame. These guys are still in the left of frame. And when he jumps over, he's still looking off to the left. He doesn't switch to look to the right. Good example is this next shot over here where we've established this, this you know slow push in on our character and he sees the light and he looks up. Now the light is on the right of frame and he's on the left of frame. And so when we cut to this over the shoulder, we keep the light on the right of frame and we keep him on the left of frame. If I was to want to then like, you know, cut to a reverse, for example, on his face, I'd want to maintain that screen direction. So I want to make sure he is continually looking on the right of frame. So if I came around like this, this would be the right kind of shot to have as a reverse of that shot because he's still looking to the right of frame. If I was like this, it wouldn't work because he's looking to the left of frame. So you cut from one to the other and it feels like he's looking in two different directions. So you want to keep him looking, keep your characters looking in the same direction, walking in the same direction. And when you swap sides, so he's looking to the right, still looking to the right. If he was walking this way, we'd want him to continue to walk this way. So make sure you maintain screen direction. Now we want to talk about motion in your camera. Now you can see in this shot here, I've got this slight boom down. I'm, I'm creating a bit of dramatic parallax in my scene. I'm just trying to create a move that leads the eye to the character, but also creates a really nice feel. The more parallax you can get, which is when a planes of objects shift across each other, right? So if you've got lots of different buildings, let's say, and you're, you're going through a street, you're going to see those buildings shift and cross across each other. It makes for really interesting dynamic shots. Pushing forward on my characters like this with the slight subtle push in it creates a lot of that nice parallax, which makes for a really satisfying thing to look at. But look at this motion. I've got this sort of rate of speed that I'm going and I cut here and 
my camera doesn't stop. It's moving the whole way through. So I've got linear keyframes on my camera. It's moving from the beginning to the end at the same rate. It doesn't slow down, doesn't speed up. The next shot's doing the same thing. It's moving at the same rate. And it's actually kind of moving at a very similar speed to this shot. That helps these two shots cut well together. I come to a point where I do stop things. So this shot here comes to a full stop. You can see the camera comes, it actually slows down. We start off moving with this pan, and then we come to a stop, and then we cut to a reverse where we're also motionless. And then in this reverse, I start to move, and then I come to a stop again. So, and then I'm cutting to a still shot. The idea is basically, if you wanna go from a moving shot to a moving shot, you wanna keep the motion consistent. And you want to also make sure the camera continues to move. It doesn't slow down to a stop. And then suddenly in the next shot, it's moving again, right? You want to make sure that you have this, this gradual linear motion in your cameras. And if you want to get to a point where you've got a, a shot that's locked off, there's no motion, that's when you need to have the previous shot come to a stop. So coming to a stop and then cutting to a motion, the shot really helps to smooth out your edit and makes things look good. The last thing I look at really when it comes to the motion of cameras is we'll take a look at uh, one of these here. I'll just switch over to my graph editor. This is a good example, actually. If you look at the Z rotation on this camera, you can see that all these curves are pretty simple. There's just like two keyframes in each one. They're very smooth, very even, except for this, this Z rotation. So look at the Z rotation. It's got this little bump in it, right? And one thing you want to look at is you, you don't have too many keys on your cameras because you want to make sure camera motion is nice and smooth. And when you've got weird little bumps like this, it can really kind of mess up the overall feel of a camera. So what I like to do is go back through and either you know rotate these guys a bit so that the curve feels a little bit better, or even in this case, get, get rid of keyframes. So you end up with nicer, smoother, uh, gradual curves. And I can play with those handles as well, just to make sure things look like they've got a really good motion to them. Uh, this is something you could do with any kind of animation, but specifically with cameras, it's really, really useful to, uh, to make sure you've got good motion. Now, another thing is making sure right here, you can see how we've got this kind of hard stop. Um, what I've done is I've actually created this keyframe and dragged it out and then scaled it up so that it ends up kind of having this slow taper. Sometimes if you have a uh, keyframe, I'll just move it so it looks like this, you'll end up with stuff like this and this will feel like a hard stop. And that doesn't have like a really nice natural feel to it. So. What you can do with these is just drag them out and then scale them, scale the handles up so that that line looks nice and smooth coming in. But you can see now it's got this gradual fall off. So it's going to get to the right position that I want it to be at, but it's always going to have this little bit of extra movement at the end that'll take some time. And that'll really help smooth things out a whole lot. So simplifying your curves with your camera animation and making sure you've got nice little gradual fades on all those endpoints. Those things really go a long way to helping your cameras shine. I hope you've really enjoyed this uh, breakdown of the layout process that I went through with this short film. And I hope you've learned a lot watching this, this first scene and how it's kind of come together. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think about this and answer any questions I can. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and please subscribe to the channel. It helps other people find it as well. Don't forget to check out the Patreon. If you check out the Patreon, there's a way to get all these project files that I've used to make this short film. If you join in this month right now, uh, April 2022 is what we're at. So if you join in this month, you get access to this stuff. But later on, it's all going to be available on the Blender Market. So you can have an eye out for it there as well. But there's a lot of other great stuff on the Patreon. So if you want to support what I'm doing in this channel, please head over there and consider signing up or joining on YouTube as well. It's another great way to do it. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you really enjoyed this. I will catch you in the next video. Until then, have a fantastic week. See you later. Yeah.